As I record this video, I respectfully acknowledge that I'm standing on the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation. And this video is about Unicode and some of the things that Jay does with Unicode that are interesting and Jig actually can display them. So let's start off with looking at a emoji. And this emoji, of course, as it turns out, is not Unicode. It's literal and it's going to a UTF-8 um, encoding which has four characters so it's got that four character encoding to be literal but at the same time if I go to this one it will look identical it'll look identical but in this case it's Unicode so when I click on this, it shows me the Unicode encoding for straight Unicode, um, 5537357568326832. So it's using those two numbers to provide a Unicode encoding. And those two numbers are called surrogates because in this version of Unicode, you can't represent every single Unicode code point. The way they do it is they split up a number or a section of it into surrogates and if you use those two numbers together that's how you get it to Unicode 4. So let's take a look at Unicode 4 and this one here looks the same on the text but it's Unicode 4 and in Unicode 4 you don't need the surrogates so your, your encode point is 128512. Now this is where J differs a little bit for, from strict Unicode. Because strict Unicode, if you fed a surrogate to Unicode 4, it would return an error. But in J, to be friendly, all these look the same, of course. Um, but to J, to be friendly, when you go to Unicode 4, you've got 5537, you're back to your surrogates. So it will actually display surrogates in Unicode 4 when in fact it probably shouldn't. Um, let's take a look. I think it was B is the other surrogate. Yeah. So you can see the difference in color too. This is a much lighter yellow, which tells you immediately it's Unicode. And it's wider, so you know it's a surrogate. It's interesting that C which is Unicode 4, and you see it's narrower because it's a single number. And D, which is Unicode 4, but it's a surrogate pair. We actually do C match D, even though they're both Unicode 4, they actually do not match because one's representing a surrogate and the other one is a straight code point. So that is kind of one of the things that can get kind of tricky with Unicode. So when you play with Unicode, there's a huge amount of power with it. Um, you can come up with absolutely weird characters like this. Um, as it turns out, that's an Aboriginal character uh, for uh, Canadian First Nations. Um, and I don't know exactly what it means, but it's the way that their language is represented. You can, of course, do all the different languages of the world, or many of the different languages of the world, and their different uh, characters. So uh, there's 5574 is the code point for that one. And that wraps it up for Unicode. You can distinguish between Unicode and Unicode 4, um, and you can distinguish between surrogate pairs, which are required for Unicode, and uh, surrogate pairs which are enabled for Unicode 4, but are not required. As I said, Unicode is its own special world, and if you decide to do a lot with Unicode, there's an awful lot to learn. But this is how Jig represents it.